Workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant in northeastern Japan are scrambling to figure out how to fix a problem that could have dangerous consequences. The system that cools hundreds of spent fuel rods stored at the facility has stopped working. Spokespersons for the operator Tokyo Electric Power Company say they had a partial power failure on Monday in the early evening. After that, they discovered a problem with an electricity supply unit. Right now, cooling systems for the spent fuel pools in reactors 1, 3, and 4 are not operating. TEPCO representatives say temperatures are rising slowly but are still at a normal level. They say they don't know how to fix this problem. But they also point out they have several days to come up with a solution. There are hundreds of spent fuel rods stored at Fukushima Daiichi. A separate system that's keeping the melted fuel in reactors 1, 2, and 3 cool is still working. TEPCO spokespersons say the level of radiation around Fukushima Daiichi has not changed. Disaster management officials in Japan have released some statistics they know are shocking, but that they hope will help people prepare. They say damage from an earthquake that's expected to hit any time could reach $2.3 trillion in a worst-case scenario. That's more than twice the current national budget. Scientists warn the Nankai Trough south of Japan's main island could trigger a magnitude 8.1 earthquake. They say the probability of it happening sometime in the next 30 years is 70 to 80 percent. Disaster management officials say in the worst case scenario, the quake and resulting tsunami would kill more than 300,000 people. Nearly 10 million others would need to take shelter because electricity and water supplies would be disrupted. Officials say damage to housing, businesses and factories could top $1.5 trillion. Another $210 billion would have to be spent to repair roads and railways. We have taken the worst case scenario to improve our crisis management. The figures are severe, but we want the public to understand in a calm manner what would happen if a mega quake occurred? Officials plan to compile new strategies within a year to minimize possible damage. Researchers say contaminated water from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant could still be leaking into the port. They're calling for a thorough investigation. A team from Tokyo University of Marine Science and Technology has been studying the seawater in a port directly in front of the plant. Tests show levels of radioactive cesium exceed the government safety standard in some places. Researchers have calculated the total amount of radioactive substances in the port over a one-year period. They say about 16 trillion becquerels of cesium-137 may have leaked into the ocean since June 2011. That's 73 times the discharge limit imposed before the nuclear accident. Experts say that amount of contamination doesn't pose a threat to marine life in open waters. But radioactive substances could accumulate in fish in the port. Radioactive water began leaking into the ocean after the 2011 nuclear accident. Officials at Tokyo Electric Power took steps. They say the leak stopped three months later. 
Research team professor Joe DeCondo says contaminated water may be leaking as groundwater. He says another possibility is damaged pipes in the compound. We need to look into every single possibility to verify the cause, if in fact contaminated water is leaking. But it's probably best if we just ignore what they're about to say. TEPCO officials say they don't think radioactive substances are leaking. They say they will continue to investigate. Representatives for the pro-gun group told the public they would be better off paying no attention to any part of the statement. Less than 1% of food in Japan has been found to contain radioactive cesium above the legal limit since the nuclear disaster. The current standard for staples such as vegetables, rice and fish is 100 becquerels of cesium per kilogram. The limit for baby food and milk is 50 becquerels, while that for drinking water is 10 becquerels. Health ministry officials say 17 prefectures conducted tests on more than 250,000 items between April and the end of February. They say cesium limits were exceeded in about 2,200 cases, or nearly 0.9 percent of the total. Fish, including greenling and sole, were found to be above the cesium limit in more than a thousand cases. Fresh produce, including shiitake mushrooms and bamboo shoots, was found to have exceeded the limit in just over 630 cases. The government orders compulsory withdrawal of a food item if the excess contamination is found in a wide area or in multiple locations. As of March 5th, more than 130 food products from 14 prefectures have been removed from distribution. On the second anniversary of the disaster, about 1,600 people affected by the nuclear accident have filed lawsuits against the government and Tokyo Electric Power Company. They're demanding compensation for the suffering and losses incurred after the meltdowns at Fukushima Daiichi. Most of the plaintiffs are from Fukushima, but they also include residents from neighboring prefectures. Many had to evacuate their homes because of radioactive contamination. Several lawsuits were filed on the same day at the district courts in Fukushima, Chiba, and Tokyo. Plaintiffs in Fukushima are demanding that their region be restored to its condition before the accident. Financial compensation is at a standstill because we've all suffered from the disaster in different ways but it's also because the liability of TEPCO and the Japanese government hasn't been established. Total compensation claims filed through the courts amount to about $55 million. The tsunami washed mountains of debris into the Pacific Ocean. Officials with Japan's Environment Ministry say tons will start washing ashore in North America next month. The officials use the computer simulation to figure out how quickly the wreckage is moving. They think more than 100,000 tons will reach the North American coastline by June and more than 200,000 tons by October. The officials think the tsunami swept 1.5 million tons of wreckage into the ocean. Some of that wreckage has washed up on coastlines in North America and Hawaii. Japanese leaders have given $6 million to U.S. and Canadian officials to help them deal with it. They say they'll hand over the results of their computer simulation to help communities deal with more. Forecasters at Japan's meteorological agency plan to post new information online later this month in the event of a major earthquake strikes. The service will give data about the effects of long period ground motion on tall buildings. Major tremors can rock high rises far from the epicenter for several minutes. The forecasters will release information about the effects of ground motion on buildings of 14 stories or more as soon as an earthquake occurs. The intensity of the motion will be ranked on a scale of 1 to 4. At levels 1 and 2, shaking will be felt but is unlikely to cause structural damage. At 3, people would find it hard to remain standing. And at 4, walls would start cracking and people would be forced to crawl to get around. Forecasters want the information to help protect those living or working in buildings that are more than 45 meters high. They say long period motion causes swaying that is stronger the higher the people are in a building. Scientists warn the Nankai Trough south of Japan's main island could trigger a magnitude 8.1 earthquake. They say the probability of it happening sometime in the next 30 years is 70 to 80 percent. 
Some local governments in Japan with nuclear plants in their jurisdiction will likely miss Monday's deadline for reviewing their disaster control plans. Other municipalities have already finished the process but have yet to draw up concrete evacuation plans. In light of the 2011 nuclear crisis, the Nuclear Regulation Authority ordered municipalities within a 30-kilometer radius of a nuclear power plant to review their disaster control measures based on new sets of guidelines. These call for evacuation areas around nuclear plants to be expanded from the current 10 kilometers to 30. They also require evacuation or stay-at-home orders to be issued based on radiation dosage. An NHK survey shows only 46% of local governments said they will be able to finish reviewing their disaster control plans to meet the deadline. Some municipalities say the central government was too late in revising the guidelines and providing explanations necessary for them to review their community-based plans. Others say they haven't decided where to evacuate residents or don't have the means to evacuate a large number of people. You set the spark, you stoke the fire, and then you act surprised When the flames go up, when the barn comes down right there before your eyes Oh, the tools that you manipulate are more powerful each day And they will overcome you, they'll crush you and take from you All the marrow and the sinew of your ideology But don't get upset, don't be like that it's your own damn fault That your flock is ready to fight It is too late To turn around Turn them all to salt No, your monsters come to life Oh Well, rocks are thrown and voices used To tear down the innocent People will die with ideas cast in rebar stoked cement Oh, the words you shout has moved the herd to break free from their cage To drop bombs on all the weaklings Retching, melting, reeking of the forfeit tired teachings of your ideology But don't get upset You can't be like that Cause it's your damn fault that your flock is ready to fight It is too late To turn around To turn them all to soul No Your monsters come to life Oh Don't get upset Don't be like that It's your own damn fault Yeah That your flock is ready to fight It is too late turn around to turn them all to soul no your monsters come to life whoa, whoa. it's come to life you set the spark you stoke the fire and then you act surprised when the flames go up, when the barn comes down right there before your eyes Oh, the tools that you manipulate are more powerful each day And they will overcome you, they'll crush you and take from you All the marrow and the sinew of your ideology But don't get upset, don't be like that It's your own damn fault that your flock is ready to fight It is too late To turn around Turn them all to salt No, your monsters come to life Crews at Fukushima Daiichi worked through the night, fixing a problem that could have had dangerous consequences. The system's cooling spent fuel rods and four pools at the plant stopped working. Tokyo Electric Power Company engineers say the systems are running again. A blackout occurred at the facility on Monday night. For a short while, workers inside the plant's accident response center were left in the dark. TEPCO engineers noticed the systems that cooled the spent fuel rods had stopped working. The pools are connected to reactors 1, 3, and 4, along with another pool. The pools contain about 8,500 8, units of spent fuel rods. 
TEPCO needs to keep cooling water flowing into them or temperatures will rise. If it gets too hot, fuel can melt down and release a massive amount of radiation. Engineers trace the problem to three high-voltage switchboards. They say they've bypassed these devices and reactivated the electricity. They say they've managed to get the cooling systems for all four pools operating again. The engineers say they still have not figured out what caused the malfunction. TEPCO spokespersons say radiation levels around Fukushima Daiichi have not changed. And they say the mechanism that cools the melted fuel in the reactors has not been affected. The life of the single mouse is a joke. Engineers at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant say an animal could have been to blame for a power failure earlier this week. The partial blackout temporarily disabled equipment that cools thousands of spent nuclear fuel rods. Tokyo Electric Power Company traced the cause of the power outage to a temporary electrical switchboard. It's housed inside a truck trailer that crews set up after the accident at the plant two years ago. Workers found burn marks on the switchboard's terminals and nearby walls. They also came across a dead creature nearby that looks like a rat. And many believe the positive PR is nothing more than clever spin. They say the animal is about 15 centimeters long. Engineers believe it could have touched the terminal, causing a short circuit. They are the disposable animal. They say this could have led to problems with two other switchboards. There is a strong possibility that this was a cause, but we are continuing the investigation to confirm what really happened. However, expectations of a breakthrough on the most pressing issues appear low. The systems that cool spent fuel rods in pools connected to reactors 1, 3 and 4 along with another pool, shut down on Monday. The pools contain about 8,500 units of spent fuel rods. Their cooling systems are now working. They are the disposable animals.